a proportion stop. This is the OJ Today. Hey everyone, I'm Alex Bastiavansky. It is so great to have you on board for this week's program and on last week's show. Mississauga Chargers head coach Joe Washkarak joined me for our annual first round playoff preview show. Well, this week it's game on. The postseason kicked off on Monday and it promises to be a first round unlike anything we've seen before in the OJHL with the opening series being only a best of three affair, it leaves the door open for plenty of surprises. Let's kick things off with a battle of East Division Titans, Wellington and Coburg. Highlights now brought to you by Instat. Instat is the official analytics supplier to the OJHL and the Duke Dome was jumping for the opening game, but it was the visitors that drew first blood. Been a stronger team as Cook brings it in. Hands off, Daffonseca curling in, shooting scores. Charlie Daffonseca, watch out for him. Yeah, there were a lot of guys Wellington needed to watch out for in the Cougars. 37 seconds later, Caleb Thompson right there. The Cats were purring up two zip at the break. The Dukes get one back in the second though on the power play. David Campbell rocks the decline. Wellington within a goal, but in the third, Colbert gets what would prove to be the game winner, Aaron Sherratt to Andy Ryston. Oh boy. Colbert pulls the upset in the opener. This is the danger in a best of three series. There's not a lot of time to get your you know what together. Number two seed Trenton hosted third seeded Halliburton for game one, and the Huskies draw first blood. Patrick Saney making it one zip for the visitors, but Jake Campbell just took control of this game for Trenton. The bank shot there from a tough angle makes it a 1-1 contest, and then Jake was back at it five minutes later. This one was uh, quite a bit prettier. The wrister finding daylight. Hawks led 2-1 at the break, but the dogs bite back in the second. Oliver Tarr follows up the rebound here, bangs it past William Nguyen. And it was all tied up. 2-2, but as mentioned, this was the Jake Campbell show in game one. Campbell finds the twine with the man advantage. That proves to be the decider. Great game from the hangar. Trenton takes down Halliburton 5-2 in game one. Pickering was virtually unstoppable this year on the way to finishing first in the north, but Stouffville was trying to spoil the party in game one late in the first. Joe Kennedy going to work and uh, you will see that again in the plays of the week. Spirit leading one zip with just a buck 05 remaining in the first though, Ian Martin. Sick feed for Christos Rodas and it was 1-1 at the break. And the Cats take the lead in the second. Matthew Altamar just fires it through the screen out front and the home side takes its first lead of the game. It was short lived though, Spirit on the rush, Jacob Roach. Banks it in off someone's skate. Can't quite see who it was. No matter. All tied up. Panthers fans were nervous, understandably, at that point until this. Chance to clear for the Panthers, and Jake Partridge is looking for more. Partridge drops. Shot. Scores. Dustin Hutton puts the Panthers back up by one. And the Cats shake off their jitters and take game one over a pesky Stouffville team for two year final. The junior Canadians were taking on the fourth seeded Patriots in this one and they open the scoring. Catalano steps up. Here's Fukakusa walking in. Catalano. Oh! Christian Catalano gets the party started. Catalano just signed with RIT last week and the Tigers are getting a good one. One zip Canadians. He was back at it soon after. Finishing again, JRC's up two zip, still in the first on the power play. Christian picks up his third point of the game, assisting on the Matt Wild goal. All Canadians in this one as they blank the Patriots 4-0 in game one. Players of the month were announced for March, brought to you by Warrior. Warrior is the official hard good supplier to the OJHL and Carter Talk of the Milton Menace is your goaltender of the month. And uh, what a great month he had, 6-3-0, with a 1.58 goals against average, 942 save percentage. 
as the Menace are trying to knock off the Georgetown Raiders in round one. Ryan Cutler was a one-man wrecking crew for the Stouffville Spirit. Great month. Uh, he put up 19 points to be named the Northwest Player of the Month. Six goals, 13 assists for the Stouffville Spirit's main point getter this season. And Emmett Pierce is your player of the month in the Southeast. Emmett, uh, what a great season overall. He's had 29 points though, which is just ridiculous in the month of March. 18 goals, 11 assists for the captain of the Wellington Dukes. This segment of the OJ Today is brought to you by Clean Quip. Clean Quip is the official disinfectant supplier to the OJHL. Hey, welcome back to the OJ Today, everyone. You know, all season long, the West Division was pure madness. Several different teams had possession of first place at various times during the season until Burlington finally took control and held on until the end. But the West was competitive from top to bottom. The two versus three matchup in the first round promised to be epic as Milton took on Halton region rival Georgetown. Now the Raiders have had trouble scoring goals this season, but they managed to hit first in this one. Face off one by Georgetown. Robert Strachan fires that one. Oh, that goes off the side of the net. Semenyuk plays it off the board. Doesn't get it out though. Down in front though, shot, they score! Georgetown, they open the goal scoring here with Jack Natashak. That Raiders lead held until the second frame. Aiden Hughes refusing to take no for an answer. Bangs home the second chance. And Milton ties it up 1-1. Now Milton would actually make it 2-1. In the third though, Andrew Duchesne hammers it home from the point. This one was all tied at two apiece, but the menace would take the lead for good. Andrew Horsley jumping all over the turnover. He tickles the twine. And the teams would trade goals after that. Milton holds on for the 4-3 win in game one. This was also a battle of Halton region as Oakville. Who's taken on Burlington. Sterling Walters opens the scoring for the Cougars and watch the celly. Jack Richard, the full-on takedown. Uh, one sip for Burlington. It was only a one goal game into the third until Joel Chauvin bangs this one in off the doorstep. The Cougars pull away. They blank the blades for nothing to take game one on home ice. This was a highly anticipated first round series. St. Mike's taking on North York. NYR draws first blood. Sean Clark going for a skate. Squeezes it home and the Rangers were up one nothing. No scoring in the second, so on to the third. North York wins the draw. Wilson Farrell just kind of throws it on goal. Good things happen when you do, though. Doesn't look like Matthew Perdue saw a thing there. That made it 2-0. George Figueres adds an empty netter to make it three as the Rangers take game one. Uh, another highly anticipated series, Aurora taking on Collingwood. The teams went back and forth in the first. Luke Reeve notches the game's first goal on the power play. Back come the Blues, though. Kevin Hanstock spots Adam O'Mara breaking towards the net. He finishes in style, and it's a 1-1 game. Not for long, though. Hollander Thompson from a tough angle there beats Noah Pack upstairs, and the Cats were back on top, leading 2-1. That lasted all of seven minutes. O'Mara feeds Marcus Lowheed. They were even Steven tied at two apiece. Collingwood takes the lead for good in the second. Adam O'Mara, oh baby. There was some mustard on that shot. That is his second goal, third point of the day. And it's the winner as the Blues take game one, 5-2 over Aurora. Okay, so Joe Washkarak mentioned last week, he thought this was the first round series where a fourth seed could take down a number one. Kohlberg won game one and they opened the scoring in game two. And these best of three series, anything can happen. Here's Kevin Dean to finish things off for you. Cougars have it. Down the wing, that's going to do it. Smith, the Cougars are on their way to the next round. They score. Wow, a massive series win for Coburg. A bitter pill for Wellington to swallow, though, as a season with great expectations comes to an early end. Burlington had a chance to finish off Oakville in game two, and they left nothing to chance. This was a bloodbath. Early in the first, Thomas Lennart squeezes it home to put the Cats up 1-0. 
Two minutes later, David Pulich jumps all over the fat, juicy rebound to make it two zip. We will spare you the rest of the carnage. Burlington runs away with it, ending the season of the Oakville Blades, who will be back with a vengeance next year. Milton had a chance to finish off their series against Georgetown. Uh, a lot of Menace fans making the short trip to G-Town to cheer on their team. And Nicholas Morea makes them happy with the opening goal. G-Town stuck with them at first. A minute later, Robbie Strachan evens it up 1-1. But the excitement was short-lived. Ryan O'Donnell tips home the point shot. That made it 2-1. And just like in the previous game, the visitors run away with it. 7-1 the final as Milton wins the series. Hold on to your hat. Their Western final against Burlington is going to be crazy. OJ commitments to tell you about. Christian Catalano uh, joins a long list of JRCs making commitments this year. And he will be an RIT Tiger in the fall of 2023, joining teammate Tyler Fukakusa, who of course recently committed as well. And Jack Richard of the Burlington Cougars. Uh, his parents must be happy. That will be a nice short trip down the QEW to watch him play starting in the fall of 23 uh, as he commits to the Niagara Purple Eagles. Way to go, Jack. And alumni news to tell you about Lucas Condata, the five-year OJHL man, has signed an entry-level contract with the Montreal Canadiens. He was named team captain of UMass Lowell this season and was exceptional. Congratulations, Lucas. This segment of the OJ Today is brought to you by Warrior. Warrior is the official hard goods supplier to the OJHL. Hey, welcome back to the OJ Today, everyone. And uh, I'm, I'm, to I'm so excited to be able to do this today. Joining me for the first time in two years. Uh, man, I love to chat to on the show, uh, Mr. OJ Images himself, Tim Bates. Tim, how you doing, man? Great, Alex. Thanks very much. And it's a pleasure to be back on OJ today again. Great to have you. And this takes on new meaning when I ask you how you're doing, because I know you just you just recovered from COVID, actually. How are you feeling? Yeah, you know what? I'm, uh, I'm about 90% uh, now. I'm looking forward to getting back in the rinks and uh, have that behind me. And yeah, I've tried to avoid it for two and a half years. And at least I caught it before playoffs. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's been a bit of a long recovery, but uh, hey, I'm ready to go. Right on. You got it out of the way now. So it's good. Full steam ahead. And I mean, we've talked so much about OJHL images on the show every year. And I mean, I use your stuff, your, you, you and your team stuff every single week. Lots and lots of great photographs you take. But for those who might be watching who don't know about OJHL images, tell everyone a little bit about OJ images and a brief history of it. Sure. Um, you know what? OJHL images is the official photographer for the Ontario Junior Hockey League. We provide all the digital content for uh, not only game action imagery, but archival imagery, as well as we control the uh, distribution of that imagery that uh, our photographers take across the league. This is our 10th anniversary of operations in OJHL images. Uh, we started in 2012 and now we're in uh, 2022 and, and looking forward to uh, what's uh, coming ahead for sure. The time flies, doesn't it? And uh, I mean, and obviously the last couple of years have been very interesting with all that's been going on. How have you guys found the return to the rinks and, uh, you know, in trying to take these photos as, as COVID's been raging. Yeah, you know, it certainly presented a lot of unique challenges worldwide with photographers. And I, the first and foremost thing is access in regards to where we could shoot and where we couldn't shoot from. So it, it changed our perspective a lot. You know, shooting with a mask on is, is a difficult challenge, as is your viewfinder will fog up. Um, it presents some unique challenges. But I, I guess the most direct impact for us was the access we had to the athletes and the coaches. And, you know, we had to respect them. They respected us in regards to the job we had to do. And uh, it, it certainly was difficult in regards to um, changing our composition in regards to what kind of photographs we're going to put out. And, uh, you know, we obviously stayed out of the dress rooms, away from the benches uh, when the COVID protocols were in so effect. But we're, we're really fortunate now that those protocols have been lifted, but we're still you know, exercising our due diligence to ensure that uh, we mitigate any kind of risk. Yeah, and uh, back to the, uh, the, the events a little bit again this year, obviously the All-Star game had to be missed due to the brief shutdown that happened in January due to COVID. But, uh, you know, the Governor's Showcase came on again and uh, everything should be back up to full speed again next season. And uh, those showcases are really one of the lifebloods of, 
of OJHL Images, isn't it? You guys do fantastic work there. Your whole team comes out and you guys are on it all weekend. Yeah, it's certainly a really busy weekend. It's a monumentous task for us. We uh, we capture every single headshot of players, coaches, team personnel of every single team, every single player, and we you know archive that for stock imagery for media outlets across the uh, um, the service and as well as um, our league and, and our team. So it's a, it's a big task. It's certainly uh, an extremely busy weekend, uh, all day events for sure for our photographers. And this year has been a big year for you, uh, you and your team in terms of technological uh, advances that have been made. Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, we're really pleased to have a business partnership with uh, Photo Shelter for Brands as well as Open Doors. And uh, without getting into the, the, the complete specifics of these two entities, is uh, Photo Shelter is the worldwide distribution source for uh, imagery where we can store our images, people can view them. That's our database of images, and there's well over hundreds of thousands of images in there. Uh, Open Doors is a, a brand new technology that we've partnered with this year that allows us to provide. Any image we take from a game goes directly into a database and the players get a notification on their uh, handheld devices or their computers and they instantly get the photograph. The moment the photograph is uploaded from our photographers, it's into their gallery and they get a notification and they can share it on their socials. Um, where we're progressing is now AI technology or artificial intelligence. We'll actually start recognizing their faces and their numbers called Roster IQ. And uh, it's actually tagging that player the moment the, the photographer presses the button and uploads the photo. So it's incredible technology. And the, and the turnaround time for this is instantaneous. It's very live. So uh, we're really thrilled to be partnered with uh, both Photo Shelter for Brands and Open Doors. Awesome, man. Okay, we've got about a minute and a half left here. So my favorite part, of course, now is we look through some of your favorite pictures that you guys have taken so far this year, uh, starting with a lovely little uh, uh, collision between one of the Collingwood players and a referee, as does happen in games, but this is a great shot, Tim. Yeah, thanks. It's uh, uh, Baxter from uh, Collingwood, and he, or sorry, Bax from Collingwood, and he was taken down by the, uh, the linesman who was trying to get involved in an altercation, lost his balance and pulled him down to the ice. So it's a unique photo. Awesome. And uh, this one I know that you really, really love. This is the Aurora player celebrating a goal. You got him in mid-jump there. And I, you mentioned you're just about to have this one framed, aren't you? To tell us the story behind this one. Yeah, it's my favorite photo for the year for sure that I, that I managed to take and snap. And a little backstory behind that. Reaver jumps so, so high. I've never seen a player ever jump that high in a celly. And I can tell you that the backstory is when he hit the ice, um, he busted the skate rivets. It popped the rivets right off of one of his skates. So when he got managed to make it over to the bench, the equipment manager showed me the skate after in between intermission said, I've never seen this before. But yeah, it was a spectacular moment and uh, certainly one of my favorite photos for sure. Awesome. Moving it along here quickly. Great shot of Noah, pa Noah Pack there at the center ice. Uh, yeah, it was a remote camera mounted in a gondola, so it gives a unique perspective, and that's what we're all about is those yeah. unique photo opportunities in the uh, OJ. Meditating before a game, and then Fuchs, Tyler Fuchakuza has been so great for the Junior Canadians in mid-shot there. Yeah, he's a, he's a spectacular athlete, and you know his body's contorted in a very unique position. We're shooting it from an upper riser angle, so yeah, Fukukusa is an incredible athlete, and that just captured a little bit of his, his athleticism. Right on. Wellington with the Sally here. I'm not sure who that is. I can't see the number, but a great Sally picture. Yeah, it was it was a, a unique Sally, and uh, you know players are, are really, uh, I think it was uh, Jackson um, Boyer, I believe, from Wellington, so really neat Sally picture. Come right over to our camera position. Yeah, and then finally, just I, I know you guys love these shots. I think you do one for, it seems like you've done one for almost every team at some point or another, but this is a great shot, this one. Yeah, you know, the traditional sewer ball. So we try to get some unique perspectives and it's tough. You know, these guys love this. Uh, they love the camera without question. So it's shot with a little bit of a remote on a trigger and, uh, you know, with a wide angle fish fisheye lens and uh, it provides a unique perspective and the players love it. It's a lot of fun. Awesome, man. Listen, you guys do such a great job. Please give my hellos to all your fantastic team, all the people there. And uh, we're going to do this again soon. It won't be two years next time, I guarantee that, buddy. So thanks for coming on. Hey, man, stay healthy. Hope you feel better and double uh, we'll chat soon. Thanks very much, Alex. It's always a pleasure to be on OJ today. Thanks. This segment of the OJ Today is brought to you by Nutrifarms, the official sponsor of the OJHL's championship series. Hey, welcome back to the program, everyone. You know, the North York Rangers were downright dominant at times during the regular season. 
and earned the second seed in the South Division. St. Mike's was third and finished 14 points behind its rivals, but the buzzers always have an ace in the hole, that being the tight confines of St. Mike's Arena. The double blue planned to use the home ice advantage to slow down the Rangers in game two. And this is another playoff prediction Joe Washkarek made last week. He figured St. Mike's would take their game at home since they know that small ice so well. Would he be correct? Well, he knows what he's talking about, Mr. Washkarek. Jared Cockamiglio opens a scoring for St. Mike's. Max Donahue responds for the Rangers though with the beautiful snipe right there. Uh, he evens it up at one apiece. Back come the double blue though. Aiden Shepard shot through traffic. It finds daylight and St. Mike's goes up 2-1. North York punched back in the second though. Uh, Jacob Gorinsky makes the initial stop here. Nicholas Kellenberger pounces on the rebound though. And once again, they were all tied up. In the third though, St. Mike's nabs the winner. Brad Summers cleaning up the garbage out front. And wouldn't you know it, Joe Oshkarak was right with his prediction again. St. Mike's takes game two on home ice as they force a third and deciding contest back in North York. Trenton was in Halliburton for game two with a chance to sweep the series. And for a while, it looked like they might do that. Dalton Bancroft gets his shot to go off the Halliburton defender. The question is, did he call the bank shot? One zip Hawks. Two minutes later, Justin Morrow gets sprung on the break. Soft hands. And it was 2-0 for Trenton after 20. But Halliburton shows its moxie. Second frame, all kinds of traffic out front. Simon Rose cuts the Huskies down the sit in half. And then late in the period, Lucas Stevenson bangs it past William Nguyen. And they were going nuts in Minden, understandably. It was tied 2-2. It stayed that way until the third. Here comes a fan, here comes Richardson, Tatar shoots, and what a score! They score! They score! We knew this series was gonna be off the charts. Two great teams, it will head back to Trenton for the deciding game. Okay, Aurora needed to win on home ice to stay alive against Collingwood. Scoreless until the second, Jake Laville banks home. La rebound and the Blues go up 1-0. Back come the Cats in the third frame though. William Moore taking the point shot. Blake Frost getting tippy with it out front. And it was all tied up 1-1. Just a buck 45 later though. Collingwood gets the winner. Kevin Hanstock hanging out at the side of the net says thank you very much. And the Blues take game two and managed to knock off the Tigers in two straight games. Okay, a look at your OJ leaders now, brought to you by Nutrifarms, the official sponsor of the OJHL's championship series. And it's early, but here are your top five scorers. Thomas Lennart leading the way with six points. A bunch of guys tied with five right now. Dalton Bancroft, uh, Josh Belgrave of the Burlington Cougars, Jake Campbell of the Jayhawks, and Sterling Walters also of those Burlington Cougars. Plays of the week now brought to you by Troy Hockey. Troy is the official apparel provider to the Ontario Junior Hockey League. In this first round playoff matchup, Joe Kennedy works in, toe drag move, Kennedy to the net, scores! And the Stouffville Spirit strike first. It was just wide. Bukakusa back, Fedak off the bench. Heinrich towards the net. Oh, Christian Catalano for the second time. To the net, Semenya plays it off the board. Doesn't get it out though. Down in front though, shot, they score! Georgetown, they open the goal scoring here with Jack Natashak. Big Sutherland rolls it in. Rangers play it right back out. Donahoe trying to get around Marcelitti. He does and he fires and scores. Max Donahoe from Partridge. Chance to clear for the Panthers and Jake Partridge is looking for more. Partridge drops, shot, scores! Dustin Hutton puts the Panthers back up by one. Thompson on the side. Rising shot, he scored! From a bad angle. Ford still got it, does DC. But Saka plays it out front. Here's a chance, one timer! They score! Cougars lead one on the burrow! Behind the net, stretching back, passes it. Oh, that one turned over in front. Here he comes! Oh, they score! 
Oh, the horse! He's got back for a second kick! And that is going to wrap things up for this week's show. But just a reminder, as the playoffs start now, your source to keep up to date on everything that's going on in the OJHL are the league's official social media outlets. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the playoffs. See you next week.